why we are still living in an old Norse saga. The Vikings. They're those bushy-bearded, brutal men from Scandinavia that grabbed booty and sailed off on dragon-headed longboats, right? Oh, and they wore horned helmets. This is the version that has been passed down the centuries, but it's not the full picture. Vikings didn't even wear horned helmets. That was an invention of 19th century German opera. The real Vikings are far more interesting, and a way to understand them better is to read the stories they have left behind. Known as sagas, these tales were first written down in Iceland during the 13th and 14th centuries. They record events, ideas and individuals from the height of the Viking Age some two centuries earlier. There's a clue to their origins in the name saga. It means, what is said. These tales were passed down orally from generation to generation while most of Europe was obsessed with gruesome deaths of saints preserved in Latin, or romances full of chivalric knights on grail quests. In the Scandinavian North, they developed their own storytelling in their own language, Old Norse. Designed to be shared around a roaring fire with a cup of mead, the sagas contain tales of heroes, warriors, epic adventures and travel, but they are also full of insights into daily life. In fact, their accessible prose style and meandering storylines makes them more like a kitchen sink drama. When you next put on a soap opera like Dynasty, just remember, it all began with the Vikings. There are farmers, slaves, lawyers, outlaws, men and women of all backgrounds and ages blended together. The sagas are family histories, concerned with the day-to-day -day exploits of ordinary people, who they fall in love with, where they build their homes, how they survive in a harsh landscape, and who they get into feuds with. One that has all this and more is Laxdala Saga. It features a complicated love triangle between the beautiful but vengeful Gudrun and lifelong friends Botley and Kjartan. There are no heroes, but rather a cast of fabulous and flawed individuals, each playing mind games with the other until their bitter, blood-soaked demise. Think Love Actually meets Kill Bill. Laxdella Saga also contains some excellent one-liners. Tarry Long brings little home. The Council of Fools is the more misguided, the more of them there are. A hungry wolf is bound to wage a hard battle. This saga tells real stories about real people in real locations. Many Icelanders today can still pinpoint exact locations where events took place. You can even bathe in the hot spring where Kjartan seduced Gudrun a thousand years earlier. The romance turns tragedy when Kjartan and Botli leave for Norway. While well held hostage, Kjartan falls in love with the king's daughter, but Botli returns home. He tells Gudrun that her lover has been cheating on her and asks to marry her in Kjartan's place. She accepts, but soon Kjartan comes back to Iceland. He has brought Gudrun a priceless headdress, but when he finds that she is now married to Botli, he takes another wife in anger and gives her the precious gift instead. This leads to a showdown. Eventually, the two couples find themselves at the same feast. Kjartan's wife's headdress goes missing. Everyone suspects the jealous Gudrun. If she can't have it, then no one can. In revenge, Kjartan blocks Botli and Gudrun in their home, meaning they can't even go outside to the toilet. The furious Gudrun provokes her husband, telling him he should kill Kjartan. Like the climax of a Western movie, Botley and his men hide on a hillside and surprise Kjartan. After a brutal, bloody fight, Botley slays his foster brother. Botley caught him as he fell. Kjartan died in Botley's arms. Botley repented bitterly. Sex and death, revenge and tragedy, power and passion. The old Norse sagas have it all. 
They weave webs of intrigue with the sorts of real, identifiable characters that wouldn't emerge until the novels of the 20th century. They were ahead of their time, and we are still living in the literary world they created. <laughs> <laughs>